everybody, Mark Expect the Comics, and I'm back with exciting news. DC is back. So if you want to hear what new updates to the movies coming out, TV shows, etc., stay tuned for that intro. Hey guys, well, like I said, Mark Spector back here talking about the exciting news today from James Gunn's uh, IG platform. We talked about uh, at length pretty much about the DCU going forward. There's going to be, I think, what he called the chapter laying out, not like phases like we do in Marvel, um, but his plans for, you know, animation, TV shows, movies, and gaming. And, you know, obviously they want to keep it jointly together and not, you know, spread out like it was before. And that was kind of like the, um, the issue with DC fans back in the day. It was just none of it was tying together. So he talked about it at length that this is going to be together, um, tying in except for the projects that were labeled as DC Elseworlds. So the Joker movie, the Matt Reeves Batman, and the Teen Titans Go will be labeled as DC Elseworlds. And any projects going forward labeled Elseworlds you know, will not be tied into the DCU continuity. So just to clarify that. Um, so let's get into the exciting news. He started off by, by saying that the projects coming out for 2023, um, the four films, which is uh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Uh, so that's still slated to come out in March. Um, and, you know, that's like any of the movies that are coming out this year you know, are still slated and they're going to be basically, you know, the movies are going to be told and then it's not going to be, you know, continued going forward into the, you know, next phase of the, or the next chapter of the DCU, as he said. Um, so you got Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. You also got the, I want to say it's the Flash film is next after that. That's coming out. Um, that movie's been pushed back quite a bit, so I'm surprised. But that's still slated to come out June 16th of this year. And then after that, one of the movies I'm really excited for is The Blue Beetle. Uh, played by one of my favorite actors out there right now, Zolo. Um, he's from the Karate Kid Cobra Kai series, if you're not familiar with that show. Um, Blue Beetle still slated to come out in the summer of uh, August 18th. And then later on that year wraps up with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and um, <clears throat> that one looks pretty exciting as well and that will be right at the end will be December 25th um, you know and, and dates could obviously change but uh, that's at least what it's you know slated for release so um, those are the movies for this year and then he starts talking about the actual you know, projects coming out that he's being part of, that he's, you know, part of the creative team and, you know, going forward. So uh, let's start talking about those. All right, so now we're going to get into the uh, first chapter he refers to as Gods and Monsters. And uh, he started off by talking about the first project, which is going to be an animated series. And the uh, animated series is called Creatures Commandos. Um, <clears throat> and uh, basically it's going to be a, a show slated for maybe seven episodes with a potential for a future live action, you know, appearance. Um, so if you're not familiar with the uh, Creatures Commando, it actually uh, debuted in a really, you know, fun series that I like to, you know, collect from time to time, and it's from the Weird War Tales. Um... And that was from Weird War Tales, issue number 93, from November of 1980. And um, obviously this book is going to see some uh, major spikes now because of the uh, latest introduction. But uh, it's going to be going into the, I would imagine, into World War II. You know, them, you know, war fighting, uh, dealing with some Nazis, and uh, maybe introducing some sci-fi supernatural characters, you know. Uh, thus, the chapter being called Gods and Monsters. Um, so, you know, obviously, if you don't already have this book, um, it, it's going to already be quite pricey. I, I would imagine this book's probably over 100 bucks by now. Um, an alternative, I would recommend, because it's going to have to be, 
you know, some villains in there, right? Um, I would recommend issue number 110. Weird War Tales issue number 110 came out in April of 1982. We got the uh, first appearance of Dr. Medusa. Um, so Dr. Medusa is a pretty interesting character. Um, if you're not familiar with her, she in the comics also has her, you know, spats with Wonder Woman. And, um, I think that that could potentially be a good, you know, character in a comic book to, you know, seek out right now while everybody is going to be gunning after number 93. So, um, <clears throat> that's one of my spec plays I'd recommend. Got some more spec plays. Um, like James Gunn was mentioning in his video that not all of the projects he listed today are going to be all of the featured projects that are going to be coming out soon. There's going to be more. They just haven't been named yet. And um, he talked about some of these characters like in the Creatures Commando that is going to be an animated se series with, you know, some of the actors and voice, the voice actors are going to be also staying going into the live action. So he, I believe it's going to be a seven part series for Creatures Commando. So I expect if they do a live action that this character could potentially make his debut. And um, I will mention that this character debuted in the Golden Age. It was not part of DC when he came out. And uh, this character is Blackhawk. So uh, uh, it was basically a man bent on vengeance after the death of his brother and sister. Um, there is some ties to a Steven Spielberg project attached to the Black Hawk movie. And, but obviously it's still in development. But um, this book is very hard to find if you're gunning for the uh, first appearance. You're not really speculating at this. You're like, you're just like, you want to buy this book because it's, it's a pricey book to begin with. But uh, it's Military Comics number one by Quality Publishing. Came out in 1941, like I said. Um, it's, it's not an easy book to find, if you can find it. There's also Military Comics 2, which is the first cover appearance of Black Hawk. Um, I'm going to kind of bring it down a little bit more because <laughs> any of those early Military Comics are tough to find. I think you can find a Military Comics 5 right now on um, on eBay, and I think that's the first appearance of Sniper. But that's kind of that's like a deep spec. I wouldn't really invest money into that book, but one I would recommend and uh, is a little bit later in the Golden Age is Black Hawk number 50 from March of 1952. And uh, this is the first appearance of Killer Shark, which is the like an ongoing you know enemy of Black Hawk. Um, that one has a great shark cover on there as well. And uh, you can get some decent copies um, online. Let me just take a quick look find some copies this there's quite a few of this book even though it's um, a later golden age for as cheap as 50 bucks so that's what I would consider an affordable speculation book and you're getting yourself into golden age which a lot of people say they can't afford golden age keys um, but I prove this proof right here proof that you can buy a golden age key from a DC title for under a hundred bucks doesn't break the bank so uh, I'd recommend Black Hawk issue number 50, first appearance of Killer Shark. Um, and then there's one more book I probably um, recommend, and this is Black Hawk issue number 133. And, you know, they like to get into the female characters as well. From time to time, we've seen it countless amount of times in Marvel. So why not in DC? Um, Black Hawk number 133 is a Silver Age book, early Silver Age, and uh, this is the first appearance of Lady Black Hawk. Um, a little bit more expensive book than uh, Black Hawk 50, so it's more risk, but um, if you do want to you know, dive into this book, you can get one for as cheap as, uh, I want to say right around $150 range. I, I would recommend that. Um, and then it obviously goes up from there. So uh, that will wrap up my spec books um, for the Creature Commando series and potential Blackhawk series. The next one he talked about was the, uh, it's going to be another series and it's going to be Waller. So, you know, Amanda Waller was already introduced and, in, you know, with Peacemaker and uh, the Suicide Squad. So I, I'm thinking this is going to be tying into the potential next season of Peacemaker. 
Um, but, you know, it, it, I'm somewhat excited for it. You know, I did like her character. Um, Viola Davis did a really good job playing um, mm -hmm. Amanda Waller. And, um, you know, it's a book that's already been, you know, specced on many times before. It's, it's nothing new. But uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with her first appearance, it is Legends issue number one. And uh, not, not her cover appearance on there, but um, it is a cool cover. But uh, yeah, this is her first appearance. You can get one for about 10 bucks all day. Um, first appearance of Amanda Waller, first appearance of, of Captain Marvel after Crisis, Infinite Earth, Fawcett characters, and uh, first appearance of Brimstone. Um, so yeah. You know, not too much known outside of that, um, but that's the uh, the new series is going to be called Waller. So the next one, James Gunn was really excited for. Uh, he confirmed it. This is going to be the start of the DC Universe, and it's going to be Superman Legacy. It's going to be a film written by James Gunn uh, with a slated release date of July 11, 2025. It's not going to be an origin story. It will focus on Superman uh, balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. Um, I think the series that he's going to be drawing from is going to be All-Star Superman number one. It is a 12-part series that talks about his relationship with humanity and um, how he basically accomplishes heroic feats while dying from overexposure of the Earth's sun. Um, you can get this book cheap all day long. Um, for, geez, you can buy it for essentially for cover price. So, uh, you know, you can, you can definitely find these in the back issue bins. Um, I'm going to show off a book anyway because <laughs> I don't have that book, but I'll show... My uh, Superman 1, which is the uh, facsimile, um, just to show off some Superman. So there you go. Um, really, he seemed really excited for that. You know, he's writing it, so I, I think he's going he's gonna to make it, you know, something really, really special. All right, and then the next project that he confirmed was the upcoming Green Lantern series, which this was often speculated on for geez for a couple of years now on hbo max that they were going to do a green lantern series so they finally confirmed that it's going to be a series with um uh featuring hal jordan and john stewart and it's going to be like almost like a true detective uh kind of series it's going to be terrestrial and that it's going to be you know focusing on earth for the most part and you know with with those two um, Hal Jordan and John Stewart, and then he said he's going to be some peppered in other lanterns in there. So who knows uh, what he's, you know, this is for us to speculate on. But um, if you're not familiar with Green Lantern, Hal Jordan's first appearance, it's a pricey one. It's uh, Showcase 22, and that came out in September of 1959. Um, coveted as one of the top DC Silver Silver Age keys. So uh, if you didn't have that book before, you're probably not going to get it now. Um, one book that you probably might be able to get is uh, John Stewart's first appearance. It's much, much more affordable, and uh, that is Green Lantern issue number 87, and that came out in the um, uh, December of 1971. So that one's featuring um, Green Lantern John Stewart and the second appearance of Guy Gardner. Um, other books you could potentially speculate on for Green Lanterns, I would probably recommend... Green Lantern issue number 49, which is the first appearance of Kyle Rayner. Who knows? Um, that could potentially uh, make an appearance. Rather cheap book right now. Um, one of my personal favorite Green Lanterns. And you can get that book in the $20 to $50 range. You know, so that I would recommend that as a spec play. All right, so the next project he also seemed really excited for. It's definitely a passion of his. He's going to be writing it, and it's called um, The Authority. So uh, The Authority came out in the DC Wildstorm back in the 90s, late 90s. Um, so definitely out of left field here. It, it almost almost feels like a Guardians of the Galaxy type of play with these, with these uh, characters. Um, there's the uh, first appearance of Apollo, first appearance of the Midnighter from Stormwatch number 4. 
Uh, there's the authority issue number one, which is like the uh, premiere issue, has the appearance of the second engineer, the first appearance of Jaren Thorndike, um, <clears throat> Wildstorm issue number 13, 20, and um, Superman and the Authority issue number one. Those are all books you could potentially be gunning for. Um, Definitely the top book of this would be Stormwatch number four. It was already a previously pricey book, you know, for little spec. It was around like a $40 to $50 book. Now it's going to be an $80, $90 book. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really seem too excited about it. Outside, it, it does seem like it might be a pretty, like, violent type of, um, of film. The next one is really exciting, especially for the uh, Batman fans is when he announced that the upcoming Batman film is going to be Brave and the Bold. So, um, and that, you know, the movie will introduce Damian Wayne, and it will be inspired by the Grant Morrison stories. So, um, Damian Wayne is a very interesting character. Um, I do like the character quite a bit. And as we, he was saying that Damian Wayne is going to be the Robin. So, and the thing with the Robin and Damien, there's a very interesting uh, and confusion when it comes to the first appearance. There's like a first unofficial appearance. There's uh, there's like I don't know chronological first appearance and so forth. So we're just gonna avoid all that confusion and uh, just talk about the first appearance of Damien Wayne as Batman, and that's gonna be the book you want to get anyways. Um, and this is Batman issue number 666. And it came out in July 2007. Uh, great cover. It's also the first appearance of Professor Pig. I do like the character. A really cool villain. And first appearance of Flamingo, which nobody cares about that character. Um, <laughs> really affordable key. Uh, you can get it in the $30 plus range, depending on a condition. Um, if you want to speculate on other potential uh, Damian Wayne as Robin books that you you might want to seek out. Uh, this is a good one. This is Teen Titans issue number 20. This came out in July of 2018. It has a first appearance of the new Teen Titans led by Damian Wayne. Uh, Red Arrow, Kid Flash, Jin, Roundhouse, and Crush. Crush is a good one because it is a daughter of Lobo. Uh, definitely highly, highly recommend that book. And that book's cheap right now. Um... So that's a good one, especially with the Teen Titans series on HBO Max, Titans being canceled, or it's it's concluding after this, this series. So uh, you know they're going to bring the Titans back. So why not being led with the new the new Damian Wayne? Um, if you don't want to look at you know something more out there, you can look at Adventures of the Super Sons, issue number one, which came out in August of 2018. And that's the uh, first team appearance of the gang. Uh, described as interstellar young badasses. So uh, that's also another one. And then you got Young Justice issue number one that came out a year later in January 2019, which is the first appearance of the new Young Justice, Superboy, Robin, Impulse, Amethyst, Wonder Girl, Teen Lantern, and Ginny Hex. So uh, you got a few options there to go, go with, and they're all super cheap books. But I'm excited for the uh, Brave and the Bold upcoming movie. And so the next one was a cool one. I was pretty excited to hear about this book because it was one of the books I was uh, speculating on last year. And uh, this is Booster Gold. Um, a lot of people may not be familiar with Booster Gold, but uh, James Gunn described it as a loser from the future who returns to the past to pretend to be a superhero. Um, this is a great book. Uh, first appearance is Booster Gold issue number one, obviously, from February of 1986. Has a few first appearances on there, which I probably expect will show up in the in the uh, in the TV series. It's uh, first appearance of Skeets, a robot sidekick. Uh, first appearance of Blackguard, and first appearance of Trixie Collins, who later becomes um, a Gold Star. Uh, so that's another book potentially you may want to check out. Is um, is uh, Trixie Collins' first uh, appearance as Gold Star. Booster Gold, issue number 13. So that's definitely a book you may want to try to look after. Um, under the radar, no one's talking about this character at all. 
and it could definitely, you know, obviously make an appearance in the uh, in the TV series. And I would also imagine, since the Blue Beetle movie is coming out this year, that there is potential for the two characters to meet up. So um, another smaller spec would be Infinite Crisis issue number four, which is the first meeting of Booster Gold and the third Blue Beetle, uh, Jamie Reyes. So uh, that's um, my books to speculate on for Booster Gold. And the I want to say the last two projects we're going to talk about is the Supergirl project. So you got Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, a movie project inspired by Tom King. Uh, Tom King's miniseries with a traumatized and violent Supergirl, which is good. I, I, I'd like to see. That sounds really good. I want to see uh, a traumatized, violent Supergirl. Um, the title we're going to talk about here is going to be Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, issue number one. That came out last year, actually, June of 2021. It was written by um, Bilkis El Elvi and uh, featured the first appearance of Ruth and first appearance of Krem, the King's agent. So uh, another book that, you know, few are talking about is that Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Uh, I don't expect it to be, you know, anything crazy in value, but it's just maybe, you know, a story that they're going to draw inspiration from. Obviously, the first appearance of Supergirl is already a pricey book. Um, if you don't have this book, it's you're going to pay up for it now. And this came out in uh, May of 1959, early Silver Age. And that's Action Comics issue number 252. Um, outside of that, there's really not much worth picking up for um, Supergirl. Yeah, that's the coveted book. Um, so that's that's really it. That's all I got to say on Supergirl. I did like the uh, series that they had on CW. But uh, <clears throat> we'll see what happens with this upcoming movie. It, you know, it's going to be a completely different spin. And then the last thing I want to talk about, which is probably my favorite, like my top thing that I'm excited for for the announcements, is uh, I believe what he talked about last, which was the upcoming Swamp Thing uh, horror film, which is like right up my wheel alley. If you know me, I love sci-fi. I love horror. So uh, after the axing of Swamp Thing, the, the TV series that they had years ago that they were trying to push for, geez, for years, they had issues with budget, issues with filming. They ended up just completely scrapping it, I believe, after two episodes, which I was really disappointed. They're finally coming out with a horror film, um, which is, you know, going to, I don't know what it's going to be called, but it's, you know, it's just Swamp Thing, you know, so uh, really exciting. It, it ties into the chapter called Gods and Monsters. Um, if you're not familiar with Swamp Thing, the first appearance is House of Secrets issue number 92, came out in July of 1971. Swamp Thing has a bunch of books you can pick up from, not just his first appearance. You do got Swamp Thing issue number one that came out in October of 72, which has a bunch of first appearances. Um, great Bernie writes in cover art, of course. You know, I have the first appearance of Second Swamp Thing, Alec Holland. First appearance of Anton Arcane. First appearance of Matt Cable. First appearance of Unman. First appearance of Nathan Ellery. And it's his first ongoing title, which had fantastic cover art. So you can't go wrong with any of these covers on the uh, original Swamp Thing run. Uh, my personal favorite is Swamp Thing issue number nine which is just a classic Bernie Wrightson cover. Um, if you want to look something elsewhere, you can also do the, um, uh, I want to say probably one of the, the newer Swamp Things. There's a bunch. Uh, the most recent Swamp Thing series that came out, I want to say it was in uh, 2021, if I'm not mistaken. It's the, um, uh, let me just pull that up real quick. Yeah, Swamp Thing in yeah 2021. Um, it had the new the new Swamp Thing Levi, which you know was like the first Indian lead character into headline in DC, which is actually a really great story. Um, written by Mike Perkins and Ron, uh, not written by Ron V. Artwork by Mike Perkins, and uh, that's obviously like, geez, deep spec. I I honestly think they're gonna go with the original Swamp Thing if anything else. But uh, interesting to see that they're going with horror right off the bat, which it took Marvel well over 10 years to finally put out anything horror-related. So so props to DC on that. 
Um, that's going to be the last project I talk about. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, coverage on the new DC titles, you know, um, for the movies and the series that are coming out in the next years to come. And hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the spec books I wanted to talk about. So if you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below if you have any of these books. Until next time, Mark Spectre Comics, out.